Hello everyone, uh, Mike from the Gear Choppers channel. I'm uh, going to replace the wheel hubs and bearings on this uh, 1996 BMW Z3. Here is the new wheel hub with the new bearings installed. Here is the nut. Uh, I ordered extra nuts. I didn't realize that these came with uh, the nuts already. So that's the part number. And I'm going to start with this side here. Uh, get the wheel off and uh, we'll just go from there. All right, so I'm just gonna let's break the lug, lug, lug nuts loose before I jack it up. Just gonna make it easier to do this while the car's on the ground. a 17 millimeter socket all right they're all loose and uh, now we'll just switch over and go do the other side so we've got the car jacked up now uh, with jack they're sitting on it's sitting on jack stands and uh both sides and i've also got i've got two floor jacks so i've got a floor jack under there just in case just for backup so i've got the lug nuts busted uh it's gonna go in here with my electric impact and uh finish taking these lug nuts out or lug studs i should say Fifth one's just gonna fall out. All right, so got the wheel and tire off. Let's set this back here out of the way. Right, so the next thing to do is to let me get the camera. Just gonna remove that dust cover there. So that's the next thing. All right. Get the lug nuts out of the way. Try to get this dust off. All time not damages too bad i do have a new one coming from rock auto but uh, whatever reason that those pieces and the extra nuts that i ordered came in a different shipment and uh i haven't got here yet and i had a free day to do this they should be here later on today but uh, to make this video get this done before I have to go back to work and uh, so worst case scenario I can put these old covers back on but like I said hopefully the new ones will be here today before I finish this video and uh, so I'm just going around here a little bit at a time trying to loosen that thing up Looks like it's coming, looks like it's almost there. There we go. So, not too bad. So, we'll just set that right there. And let me get the camera. Um, so, now we've got to remove this nut here. So, let me take my other glove off. So, right here, it's pinned in. Uh, keep that thing from turning so I've got to knock that 
back that way. I'm gonna try to use a punch and see if that works. So, yep, that'll be the next step. All right. So now I'm gonna take this punch here. See if I can get it on the camera. I'm gonna take this punch. Try to straighten this nut out here, the little part that's been over, so we can get the nut off. Looks like it worked pretty good. So now you can see that that nut is straightened out this outer ring and it's not in this slot right here anymore. So it's not impeding the uh, turning of this big nut. So that's the next thing we'll remove is, well, I think we're gonna take the uh, brake caliper assembly off and uh, tie it back somehow. And then I'll start taking that nut off. Okay, so now I've got to get this bolt here loose, and there's one right there. So I've already broke them with the breaker bar. They're uh, in there pretty tight. So now I'm just going to finish them off with the electric impact. Let's see if I can get this camera somewhere. Yeah, that work. You won't be able to see too much, but you see the bolts. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this little electric impact that I'm using. It's a DeWalt. They're, gosh, I got this on sale for uh, less than 150 bucks, I think. breaker bar back on it get it moving so, it's a lot easier if you turn your wheels so you can get to this there we go I got a little turn up there the brake lines right in the way so it makes it a little bit not fun but ah, it's always fun. All right, so All right, I got it on the loop now with the breaker bar. Okay, let's see if we can get the impact on it now. There we go. So I'm gonna compare these two bolts are the same so it doesn't matter if I get them mixed up for which one goes on top which one goes on bottom so I've got my handy dandy motorcycle tie down there and I'm gonna slide the caliper off there we go so I'll use this motorcycle tie down here if I can hopefully it'll work let me see here there we go put it through there and then just go over this strut there somehow hook it back yeah one a little bit higher than that it's putting a little bit of stress on the brake on so we'll go right there So 
just wanna. So you just don't want to get the camera here. You just don't want to have this brake line where it's hanging down just by the brake line, putting that brake line in a bind. So that's all that's about. So I'm going to straighten the wheel back up and try to get this. Let's see if I can do it right here. So now got this uh, 46 millimeter socket. Uh, that's the size you got to have. So anyway, it's a cheap one. I got it from Amazon. It was like 14 bucks. But this is torqued down to 200 and something foot pounds of torque. So this is not going to be fun getting this off of here. So let me get all that figured out. All right, something I forgot was this, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, set screw uh, for the to hold the brake drum on. Uh, I took the caliper off earlier. I had to go back and put it on because I couldn't get this uh, loose here. It's a six millimeter Allen head. I couldn't get it loose because when I was trying to turn it, the brake rotor was turning at the same time. So I put the caliper back on and uh, just put it, just use the stick to uh, push the brake pedal and hold pressure on the caliper. So I've got that off. I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, caliper back off. Pressure off, dummy. Well, while I'm thinking about it, I got the brake pressure on. I'm going to go ahead and loosen the one on the other side here. So, thumb it. Stool. Pull this caliper off like I had it before. Get that rehung. So there's that. Hang it back up like we had it. out of the way so now we're going to get to work on this um, big 46 millimeter right here so we're going to go with that socket i've got an adapter Yeah. 
So here we are. Uh, this is a three quarter inch socket. So I don't have any three quarter drive stuff. So I've got this adapter here that goes from half inch to three quarter drive. So we're gonna put that in there. And get my breaker bar. And we're gonna see if we can get this nut loose. Probably gonna have to use a cheater pipe, but hopefully it'll just come off. I'm gonna have to stand up here and get some leverage. Let's see if we can get this off here. Yep, that's not coming, so I'm gonna have to grab my brake on my uh, cheater pipe. Get out. There we go. Awesome. So there is the nut that I just took off. I guess I could have pulled the oh wow. That's crazy. So the wheel hub came off with the brake rotor. I don't think that's supposed to happen, but I think these bearings are severely worn out. So I'm gonna put this back on for now. what the problem is the race is stuck on the spindle so that's not going to be fun so wow what a disaster so if you can see here the race to the back bearing is still on the hub so i'm going to have to get a puller or something to uh, get that off of there i don't think it's going to come easy let me just, just for grins. Oh, man. I got lucky. All right, so yeah, the bearing basically came apart. Uh, these things are, got 185,000 miles on them. And uh, a lot of vibration going on in the front end. Uh, changed all the front suspension out, all the bushings, everything. Uh, new struts, new tie rod ends. Uh, changed the drive shaft flex disc bushing. Uh, you can see that in another video that I've got up. Thinking that would cure this vibration problem that I've been having. Uh, so the only thing left to change out are these uh, uh, wheel hubs with new bearings. That doesn't do the trick, I guess maybe look at these rotors and uh, see if they're warped but hopefully this does the trick so i'm gonna disassemble this rotor from that old hub and then we'll put the new one on okay we're gonna 
Take this new wheel hub. And, uh, slide it on here. Hopefully it goes on fairly easily. Doesn't look like it's going to. So you gotta tap with the rubber mallet here. It's not all the way on. We'll give it a give it a little more love here. There we go. Well, now my rice is coming. Let's put that on there and see if we can get that in there with that. There we go. So. It looks like it should do the trick. I just want to go look at the other side and see if that's all the way back. Uh, I believe it is. Give it a few more tabs just for fun. Feels a lot tighter. I'm going to take a pause here and I'm going to go take the other side apart and I'm going to look at uh, this here and what it looks like on the other side and make sure that, uh, that that's set in there, the correct depth. So let me pause the video and I'll go do that real quick. All right, I checked the other side. This one looks pretty dang close. I think it's fine. So we're gonna put our new nut on here. You can see this nut doesn't have any indentions yet. Like the old nut, if I can find the old nut. I don't want to dip it, but here it is. So, you can see where this one's been. The one we just took off, it's got that little piece right there. So, this one's a brand new one. So, my next home mechanic problem here is I don't have a torque wrench. This is supposed to go to 214 foot-pounds of torque. And uh, my... Old torque wrench here only goes to 160. So the plan is I'm going to torque it down with this and uh, I'll know I got 160 on it and then uh, I'm going to put the breaker bar on it and tighten down uh, approximately the same uh, you know amount of pressure that it took to get this off so I've seen other guys do it and they just use an impact and they just run it on there with an impact and uh, they don't torque it or anything so I think I'll be fine with that uh, that nut pinch is over so uh, it's not going to come off per se uh, just due to the design of it uh, but I guess it could be loose and still cause some vibration. But hopefully not. Uh, gosh, I don't know if I can even get this down to 160 without a cheater pipe. But I don't want to do that. Oh, there we go. So there it is. The torque wrench is clicking over. So that's 160 foot-pounds on it right there. So I'm going to take that off. Go back to my cheater bar and my half inch breaker bar. If I can find it, I think I left it on the other side of the car. I sure did. 
So, cheater pot, half inch breaker bar. Uh, just gonna use, try to approximate the amount of pressure that it took to get it off to uh, tighten this down. So I got tension on it there so it doesn't slip off. Tell you what, I'm gonna go one more notch up. I gotta be careful here not to scratch the side of the car with this rusty little brick and bar pipe. see how much more it turns. Yeah, I think that's going to do it right there. That feels about like the amount of pressure that it took to, to get it off. So I'm going to go with that. Have any problems? I don't think I will. Let me go back over here. I'm gonna grab my punch. We're gonna punch that uh, back into that slot right here. So we're gonna punch that over. And uh, man, these this is really really tight. I hope those old bearings were just like super worn out and this wears in or something. I don't know. It's not going to be fun if I goof something up here, but I think it'll be all right. So let's punch this over. I don't think I'm going to try to do this. I saw a guy doing this. Let's try that. There we go. So you can see there that it's been over into that slot. Uh, I might do it a little bit more. Just didn't turn out like I wanted it to. But I'm going to give it a few more taps. There we go, that looks a lot better. So it's in there more now. So we should be good to go there. Uh, I'm gonna wipe this down with some brake clean. Hopefully I know where it is. Disorganized garage because I can't ever find what I'm looking for. Got loads of tools and they are never where they're supposed to be. There's a little bit left in this can. Let's try it again. So, Spray this outer surface off here with some brake clean. I don't think it's really gonna matter a whole lot as far as that goes, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So then, to get the rotor off of that other wheel hub, I just that probably wasn't good for it. I just tapped it with a hammer. It wasn't that big of a deal. It came right off. So I'm gonna clean this rotor backside of it with some brake clean. 
get all my greasy glove prints off of it. And I'm gonna clean this inside surface. these two pieces of the face of this where this is going to mount, mount up, get any grit or grime or anything off that, so these two pieces fit as flat as they can together, alright, there we go, let me find my So I got my hole lined up here for this piece. And of course I left my wrench on the other side. My Allen wrench, but we'll get that started by hand. Okay. Now. Get my gloss back on. We're going to give that a little cinch. Just to. So I can get it squared up on that wheel hub. There we go. It's got a shoulder on it. So once you get that going, and of course we'll tighten this. We'll put the beans to that. Uh, once uh get that caliper put back on, which I'm going to do right now. Let me clean this rotor off on this side. It's a pretty solid. About time to put some new brakes on here. I'll make a, another terrible video doing that where I can't find my tools and all that fun stuff. Uh, just kidding. Hopefully this isn't too boring of a video. Hope hope you're you're seeing that anybody can everybody's scared of these BMWs. I love them. Uh, everybody thinks they're hard to work on, the parts are expensive, all that stuff. Uh, I mean they're temperamental, don't get me wrong, but I mean they're precision, right? Tolerances are a lot tighter on everything. I mean, this car's got 185,000 miles on it. I know I keep saying that, but, you know, I'd get in this car and drive it to Canada right now if I had to, uh, even if I didn't have to. Uh, I drive it, you can look at my road trip, I drive it about 350 miles every couple of weeks back and forth to work. Uh, 350 miles one way. So it's about 700 miles. And uh, I don't blink an eye. This old car's always treated me well. And, But I mean, it's like any car. You gotta, you gotta do maintenance on them. You gotta fix things. Things will do wear out. Uh, they're not perfect, but when they're up and running, they're fun. This little car's only got a four-cylinder, but it is not the fastest car I've ever owned, for sure. But it's one of the funnest. Uh, I just love it. So get that bolt on there and I'll get this somewhat set down with my impact and then I'll put the extra ump on it or the beans I always use that term but there's other youtubers that use that term they've kind of coined that phrase and I don't want to use it too much but it is something that I've always said
turn the wheel and get that cinch down good and tight. I'm going to trip over my brake for it. Stand up, put some, put some raw on it. All right, I think that'll do that one. This is uh, this little car's kind of like for me. I can't afford a fancy exotic car. Uh, this is kind of my blue collar exotic, I like to call it. Uh, you don't see a lot of these on the road anymore. So I mean, if you go on your local Craigslist, Dallas, Fort Worth, anywhere, anywhere in the world, and you search for these cars for sale, you'll find more Porsche 911s uh, in a city than you will. An old BMW Z3, so it's kind of neat to me. So anyway, let me put a little oomph on that one. Looks good. Let me, I'm gonna straighten this back out. Use my stick to apply pressure to the brake and we're gonna cinch this down. So we're going to go back. This is the uh, six millimeter Allen wrench that holds that pin. So we just want to make sure that it doesn't. Oh, there we go. I didn't put my brake pressure on. Getting ahead of myself. So I'm just going to use my stick here. Put it on the brake pedal, jam it up here against the seat. Scratch anything up in there. And we'll just tighten this. Oh, uh, fix and turn it the wrong way. There we go. So, that's really it. Uh, I'm going to do the other side off camera. I don't want to bore you with uh, my shenanigans over there. But uh, just for now, it's. I don't remember what time it is, but I live out in a little small town north of Dallas and UPS and all that stuff. They don't come till later in the evening. So for today, just to drive it today, uh, I'm gonna put this old dust cap back on. That's why I didn't wanna just rip it, just rip through the metal when I was taking it off. I tried to take my time. ruin this thing as I was taking it off. So. All right. 
out. So that's fully seated. We're gonna roll with that. Uh, I'm gonna put the wheel back on and do the other side. And uh, then we'll take it for a test drive. Hopefully this solves my vibration, bleh, vibration problem. It's been driving me nuts ever since I've owned this car. And like I said, I've replaced the suspension, all the front suspension. Uh, replace the drive shaft flex bushing. You can watch that video and uh, just doing everything I can to get this thing to drive like a brand new one. Uh, hopefully this does the, does the trick. And, uh, after I finish the other side, we will, uh, I'll go for a test drive and I'll bring the camera along and give you my honest opinion. Hopefully this solved my problem. So I'm not going to bore you with me putting the wheel back on or doing the other side, but, uh, we'll go for a test drive here shortly. Daily. 
used to uh, really shudder. The steering wheel would just flutter back and forth uh, when you brake the car really hard. But uh, it's not doing that anymore. Of course, that, that was kind of some slick asphalt right there. It's hard to tell. But I did it before, and when you jam on the brakes, they don't grab and, and uh, shake the steering wheel violently like it used to. So I'm going to attribute that to the wheel bearings. There's still a little bit of flutter in the, in the steering wheel that I want to get rid of. I'm going to have these tires rebalanced. They're fairly new. They're Pirellis. They're not P0s. They're an all-season tire. But I'm going to have them. See, there's a lot of traffic on this road. It's really fun to drive, but there is a lot of traffic out here. Uh, but I'm going to have the tires rebalanced. See, see if that changes anything. It's about time to get new brakes anyway. I was looking at those pads when I took those calipers off. Yeah, the rotors are a little glazed over. The pads, they still got some meat on them, but they're glazed over too. I want to do that. And then, like I said, I'll put out another video. Probably replace the ABS sensors on all the wheels at that time. And hopefully that'll turn my ABS light out. And then my ABS will share, like, all that fun stuff.